All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp Shapiro. So glad you could join us on a Monday. Yeah, we're going to preview a little, <clears throat> excuse me, Monday Night Football. We'll be getting to all that, but uh, I want to start. We were talking about a dangerous precedence in the NFL and in sports. Well, you want to talk about disgusting, embarrassing. No, I'm not talking about the UNLV loss. Uh, we talked about that already. Uh, talking about the Miami Dolphins, they lost to the Baltimore Ravens yesterday. They lost badly, 59-10. to 10. An NFL team, I don't care who you are, when you lose 59-10, to 10, that is an embarrassment. And last I checked, the Baltimore Ravens are a decent football team. But they're not the Patriots. They're not the Patriots. Um, so after this blowout <laughs> loss, according to reports, and reports that are usually pretty on top of Mike Florio does a great job. Uh, covering the Dolphins, he said multiple Dolphins players have contacted their agents after Sunday's season-opening blowout loss and directed them to attempt to engineer trades elsewhere. And apparently that is multiplying now. There's not only several players, but other players now have done the same. Now, look, we don't know what's happening behind closed doors, right? We don't know the situation there with the coaching staff management. But what we do know is I do find it interesting that it happens after this 59-10 to 10 loss. What do you guys make of this? Unbelievable the fact that an NFL team would even think, uh, some players on NFL team would think we would go down this road. Where's the ownership, right? And I don't mean ownership as in the owners of the pay. Uh, where's the ownership of the players of your team? You've been going through the dog days of summer for August and training camp. You're trying to get ready for the season. You're trying to, you know, you, you go out there and you just absolutely lay an egg against the Baltimore Ravens, and this is your response? This, Brian and J.D., <laughs> is the wussification of society. And by the this way— This is where you give trophies to everybody, okay, as kids, and this is kind of the impact of it. You think you can just bail out. This is where college kids, they want to transfer four times because they have a, a, you know, a position battle against somebody, and they lose it, so they want to say, oh, you know, I'm going to go to another school where I have a better chance to play. This is ridiculous to think that NFL— players where's your professionalism you're an nfl player own it as as players and as a team and just because you get whacked on a given sunday you're gonna you're gonna have a mass exodus of players asking to get waived to me it's absolutely preposterous and it's it has no place whatsoever in the nfl and by the way uh, according to pro football talks mike florio he also added that some of the players are saying that the coaches aren't serious about competing and winning and by all appearances have bought into the notion that the Dolphins will take their lumps now in the hopes of laying the foundation via high draft picks for building a successful team later. What do you guys make of that? Well, uh, yeah, a lot of teams are. I mean, this happens in basketball all the time. It, apparently the Dolphins are doing that for the number one pick in the draft, who will probably be Tua Tagovailoa from the University of Alabama. But I could I can guarantee you this, Brian, despite the fact that, that the Dolphins have been discussing tanking and, and, and they basically scud missile their entire team, so that's clearly what's going on. That being said, if Antonio Brown didn't act a fool the last two months and get rewarded for it, this wouldn't even be a conversation. I don't think you'd see players doing this right now. Right now, players believe because of the slippery slope here, that if they just make and make make more or less an ass of themselves, disrupt ownership, disrupt the team, disrupt the chemistry of what's going on, they can talk to their agent, they can they can get advice from somebody else. And they can go wherever they want. Mm -hmm. That's why I think that this Antonio Brown situation could be one of the worst things to happen in the NFL in a long, long time. Worse than the Colin Kaepernick thing. Because what happens if a couple of players reach out to their agents and say they're not, or what if the news gets out that players are reaching out to their agents that they're not trying to get, that, that, that they want to leave the team? Think from a gambling perspective. Who wouldn't bet against that team? in a sport like the yeah. NFL and a sport like football in a place like the NFL, knowing that they're not even trying that, that they don't, that they don't want to be there. They're not going to make a conscious effort where they could literally injure themselves if they don't want to be somewhere. And so that's why I think that Antonio Brown needs to be suspended for the rest of the year. This, this, this situation where he did what he did to, to John Gruden, to Mike Mack, the city, to, to the city of not just Oakland, but, but also Las Vegas. And then he gets rewarded by going to arguably the best franchise and professional sports with the best quarterback in the history of the NFL, which can't even be debated at this point. I don't want to sound how like many, how many players are, are going to look at that and say, wow, I could do that too. And that's, and that's where we're at right now with this mm -hmm. after this situation. So yeah, Antonio Brown, the fact that he's on the Patriots is a complete joke, despite the fact that they don't need him, but he should be reprimanded in the worst way. Not a, not a lifetime ban, but a one year suspension. So that people know that you can't just do this. You're on, you're on an NFL team. You can't just go to a different team whenever you want to 
by acting ridiculous and embarrassing the team in the process. And right now, players actually think that they can do that. And look, I don't want to sound like the old, bitter, get-off-my-lawn guy, okay, that was born back in 1950 or something. <laughs> but I, is, there, is there something to this, guys? Do you think there is a, something to the mentality of the young athletes these days? Oh, I mean, I, mean, look, look I just Instagram. brought it up about the college kids that want to transfer because they, you know, because they get beat out of that position. You know, the, all this talk about, you know, participation trophies for youngsters out there, for everybody, no matter whether or not you win or lose. And now you've got NFL players in mass exodus trying to get released or cut or, or or you know basically leave a team because you get destroyed in week one to me it's it's i think it's an overall mentality that is just is just sad well to it's, see, it, and it's it, kind of pathetic it's what have you done for me lately it's hedonism it's social media it's all these different things I agree, but, it, yeah. but it could have such a bad effect on gambling on sports betting if these players are trying to leave these teams and they're just left totally decimated mm -hmm. you can't even put lines out for games like that i agree with both you guys it sets certainly a dangerous the, 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 precedence the brand of sports mm -hmm. the, the brand of the nfl just goes down the tubes and the ratings i don't care if it's professional sports betting in 17 more states the ratings will absolutely follow because no one yeah. wants to watch that crap and well, give me a yeah. break it's not like you're digging ditches out there okay you're playing on, in, for the nfl you're in the best football league in the you're, world you're playing in miami you're getting, in south beach yeah, you're in okay? south you're, you're it's in, not rough you're in great weather if you're single yeah. there's <coughs> there's plenty of women oh around you it's, 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 it's fantastic it's you're, you're making at <laughs> yeah. a minimum a half a million dollars a year <laughs> you're, you're getting 50 grand a week to play football and you may you and whether you play well or not you're still getting paid by the way on I mean, side you're, note you're, you're um, in the top one percentile yes. of on the entire of the top we'll say point zero zero one percentile of the entire world yeah. by the way on a side note uh you know uh, not necessarily to change the subject but to stick on miami for a second I made a half-court shot at a UConn Huskies basketball game when I was 15 years old. I won round-trip airfare to Miami. I stayed at a hotel with a friend of mine when I was 16 years old, and I was admitted into a strip club. Not to be confused with Deja Vu Adult Emporium, but it was called Deja Vu. It was a strip club in Miami. They let me in there when I was 16 years old where I received my first lap dance from a half-naked woman. I just thought it was very important that I share that on the radio. So I do have <laughs> some very, very uh, important ties to Miami, but I do agree. Miami is a great place to live. No it's doubt not about like it. you're playing in Buffalo or Detroit yeah. hey, or Kansas Ice, City. I mean, you're playing Vanilla in Ice Miami. Lives there, so it's got to be a great yeah. place to live, right? But anyway, I want to move on to week one of the NFL and surprises and disappointments. I, I want to talk briefly about the game last night, uh, New England and, and, and Steelers. We touched on it a little bit. But the Steelers are a very young team. They're just not a very good football team. I think Ben Roethlisberger, this very well could be his last year. And uh, never been a big Mike Tomlin fan. Uh, don't think he's a great coach. He wins. Not a great coach. Uh, New England just tore them to shreds. Pittsburgh unable to score a touchdown. All they were able to get was a field goal. But let me ask you guys this question. I think Tomlin is just a, hor a horrible coach. Here's what. You're down 17-0. You have the ball at the one-yard line, fourth and one. You decide to kick a field goal. What kind of decision is that? And I'm not saying the game would have changed. I'm not saying even the complexion of the game changes. Why would you try to kick a field goal there when you're down 17-0? Nothing is going your way. And Tomlin says, let's just get three on the board. I thought that was a really bizarre, weird decision, almost like raising the white flag saying, I give up. Didn't make a whole lot of sense, to say the least, when you know you're going from being down three scores, right, to being down... Two scores. I don't I understand that. Necessarily know at that late of juncture in the game, but I wouldn't call Mike Tomlin a horrible coach. He does have a Super Bowl ring, and and has established a you know a pretty quality climate there in Pittsburgh with that Steeler organization. But that being said, yes, uh, I, I was uh, surprised at how easily the Patriots handled the Steelers last night, given. You know, all the uh, the hullabaloo that's I mean, I mean, surrounded this team in the last 24 hours. It wasn't basically. even close. The first yeah. touchdown of the game, Josh Gordon catches the ball from the 15 yard line, breaks three tackles from cornerbacks, yeah. and easily scores. Don, Dante Moncrief dropped to what, three or four passes? How is he in the NFL? The guy has hands like bricks. And Stephon Gilmore, the defensive back for the Patriots, is by far the best mm -hmm. defensive back in the game. He just shut down Juju Smith-Schuster like nothing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even a conversation. Of course, James Conner was average. The thing about the Patriots is they're just ridiculous. You've got Lawrence <laughs> Guy, undrafted free agent. Dietrich Wise, fourth-round pick. Uh, they, they traded Malcolm Brown. Danny Shelton was a top-five pick for the Browns, four, or seven pick, four years ago. Has an average career that doesn't, doesn't do very well. Patriots pick him up. Now he's a monster. It doesn't yeah. matter who they have. Their personnel means nothing. It's all about... Belichick has he has specific things that each position needs like Rex Burkhead 
Rex Burkhead ran a four seven one forty. I saw that. But on you know the, what? He ran a combine. He, he ran yeah. a six eight five shuttle. Yeah. He he ran the top top two and top three shuttle and cone. He had a thirty nine and a half inch vertical and a ten foot five broad jump. He's an explosive athlete. He just wants those those running backs to be wide receivers. James White, Rex Burkhead, yeah. guys that are overlooked. He looks for specific things, measurables that are, that are necessary for on, on a position basis. And he doesn't care who you are. And he just and he interchanges as long as he has one thing, one mainstay, and that's Tom Brady, which he's had for 20 years. Mm-hmm. So I ask you guys this question. Uh, surprises, biggest surprises, and biggest disappointments in week one. Well, the biggest surprise slash disappointment for me was the Cleveland Browns. That performance against the Tennessee Titans was not what we expected to see. I was someone who, you know, has no allegiance whatsoever to Cleveland, but I was excited to see them. They were, to me, were going to be one of the more exciting teams to watch in the NFL this they year. You have all those yeah. weapons, right? When you have Baker Mayfield, who is a, a flashpoint at the quarterback position, and then, of course, you've got the running back situation there. I thought they were going to be very exciting to watch, and I was extremely disappointed, J.D., in seeing what the Cleveland Browns were out there and what they ended up doing, particularly in that second half against Tennessee yesterday let me just give out the number again if uh, again what are your some of the biggest of disappointments and surprises of week one of the nfl we'll take your phone calls right now two five seven five three nine six again that number to call seven oh two two five seven five three nine six uh dak prescott four touchdowns 400 mm-hmm. yards first quarterback ever in, in cowboys history to, to have 400 yards and four tds and actually win the game he wants to get paid and he's going to get paid if he keeps this up biggest- no doubt and, and along those lines, too, J.D., right? Lamar Jackson. How about the performance that, that guy put in? That, that, that Dolphins game, clearly there was something wrong with that game, so uh-huh. I'm not going to talk about that. But Dak <laughs> Prescott. And then Eli Manning. Eli Manning yeah. and, the, and the Giants organization and how the fact they just don't give Saquon Barkley the goddamn ball. He's the best running yeah. back in the NFL from a physical perspective. He's six six foot two thirty five, runs a four three forty. Give him the ball. Yeah. What are you doing? Why are you throwing the ball to Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram thirty or forty times? Makes no sense to me. Okay, wait a minute. You said don't t- let's not talk about that game. I'm not gonna let you off the hook on that, JD. Lamar Jackson put in a stellar oh, performance. He, he, Look, he, I get it was abso- against the Dolphins, did. but that was a historic by by all measures performance for him at the quarterback position. And look, there's a big question mark in Baltimore because obviously you let Joe Flacco go, guy who's won a Super Bowl there, and they had a standard. And, you know, defensively, they've been a team that has been, you know, one of the one of the top tier defenses in all of football for years. And now, you know, it's basically a new era. That guy put on just an absolute display. I get it was against the Dolphins, though. We'll try to squeeze in a couple phone calls here. Your thoughts on week one, maybe surprises or disappointments. That number to call 257-5396. Let's go to Chuck. Chuck, what's going on? What's up, Chuck? Hey, don't don't forget that Patty's gotten to kill Harry also. Yep. Uh, uh, JD, uh, how did, I'm sure you're on Ken Show Friday. Uh, how, did, how did your picks go? They didn't go great. Well, we'll put it that way. The picks that I, that I did on Ken Show, I actually changed a couple on the day of the, on, on the day of the games. So my picks weren't great. I don't typically start football very well. I usually start pretty slow. So I think I started like, I think I'm one and four, or one and three in the NFL this year so far. Are you going to be on a show every now and then? I'm going to be on a show every Friday, it sounds like, over at Legacy oh, okay. Stadium. And wh- where's the Friday show at? It's at Legacy Stadium. It's on the strip. Oh, okay. it's, it's in the basement of the Palazzo. It's probably, I mean, it's probably the nicest sports bar in the United States mm-hmm. of America. I mean, it's unbelievable. You can uh, see the patio yeah, strip the place side. Is great. Chuck, yeah. I do want to brag. I was 6-1 and one yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes, I was, my friend. Who, who, who'd you get reamed by? Uh, Detroit. Oh, yes. <laughs> Detroit. Uh, but of course he did. Uh, I'm in know, studio. Yeah, so Chris is right here in studio. That's I would have gone 7-0. and oh. I had Detroit we minus, talk about that game. minus three. They were in control the entire game. The game ends in a tie. <laughs> Detroit should have easily covered in that game. Uh, Instead, they lose outright in overtime. It was an abomination. And you know what? That being said, I think yeah, Kyler Murray would be my number two surprise. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. You know what? It's just one of those things for me. Maybe it's my attention deficit disorder. Mm-hmm. And Ken, Ken is very good what he does. JD's a great handicapper. I can't go game by game for two hours and, and just give my predictions. I'm not, Chuck, I, it, mentally I'm not capable and, of doing and, and that. I will say this, Chuck. I've been, <laughs> I've been focusing on baseball lately. I'm actually about 33 and 9 in my last 42, which is a great run for me in baseball. Oh, but, heck yeah. So, so yeah, oh. it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to transition into football for the first couple of weeks. Chuck, Chuck, who do you like tonight? We got Houston and New Orleans. And uh, game two, of course, Denver and Oakland. Who are you taking tonight, Chuck? Uh, Aints and Denver. Yeah. No D. Denver and Aints. 
Yeah, so he likes New Orleans and he likes uh, Denver in the matchups, both games. So uh, uh, surprisingly, well, I shouldn't say not you know uh, to open when Oakland was minus three, and then of course what happened with AB that changed a lot. Denver is now favored by a field goal. I think that's going to be a very interesting game tonight. They're saying it's going to be an extremely low scoring game. The over under forty two, forty three, depending on where you shop. Yeah, and again, both of them under. Yeah, and then Houston nor, nor the Saints. I, I'm not comfortable taking that under. I can see that game being in the 30s. Uh, both teams can score. Uh, I would stay away from that total. I I actually like if you put a gun to my head uh, in these games. I like the Saints and the over. And I would, uh, you know, I think Oakland's going to surprise everybody tonight. I know that everybody is going to be on Denver. Everybody thinks that the loss of A. B. It's done, but I'm telling you, I, I think I think I'm going to take a shot here on Oakland. I think Oakland wins this game. I think it's going to be a disgusting football game. I could see a 21 to 17 type game where Oakland somehow finds a way. Hey, got a quick note on the big on the Mountain West. The first week they were four and one against the Power Five. Which is extremely impressive, and guess what? That does not bode well for UNLV football. That does not bode well for UNLV that got destroyed against Arkansas State over the weekend. Chuck, I appreciate the phone call, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for the call, Chuck. Uh, again, that number, 257-5396. Why don't we take a quick break, and when we come back, really, really horrible story involving Kawhi Leonard, a very close member of his family. We'll get to that. Uh, it involves somebody getting killed at a casino. Uh, we'll get to that story. It's just bizarre, bizarro world. Chris Wynn in studio. I'm Brian Shapiro along with J.D. Sharp. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K-Don.